Hello and welcome to another Vital PBX video. This is your friendly tutorial, Joseph. Today, we're going to be talking about the new phone provisioning module for Vital PBX. This phone provisioning module is replacing the old endpoint manager, and it was uh, originally in beta for quite a while, uh, but now we have released uh, the full version, and uh, we are actually having a series of webinars uh, going on. So more information about them will be down in the description. So today, we're going to be taking a look into how this phone provisioning module works and how you can use it. So let's get started. So while you're at it, why not like this video and subscribe? Also, click that notification bell so you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. The first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to make sure that we actually have the add-on module installed. So for this, we will go to admin, then go to add-ons and then select add-ons. And then we're going to select from the list of add-ons, the phone provisioning module. If you cannot see this list, make sure you click on clean cache and then click on check online. Once you have the add-on downloaded and installed, you can actually refresh your screen and then go to PBX and then you will see a new section called provisioning. We will click on this provisioning section and there we can start configuring our phone provisioning module. So the first thing that we have here is the HTTP settings. Here we can select the tenant and add some auth user and password so we can add extra security to our provision, which we can use on our devices to add some extra security to our phone provisioning. This way you will require a username and password to access the phone configurations. Next, we have server settings. Here we can set up global configurations which will be used for all of the devices. So let's configure our server settings. So let's add a description. Let's call this my server settings. So let's add the server domain. This will be the FQDN or IP address for your server. This will be what uh, will be input on the devices under the um, SIP domain or registration domain. So in this case, and this is a local machine, I'm going to add the IP address for this local machine. PJ SIP port, remember with Vital PBX3 and onward, uh, PJ SIP is under 5060 uh, or whichever port you have changed this to. Under transport, you can select UDP, TCP or TLS. For the SIP port, we're going to select 5062. HTTP port, we can leave it at 80, or you can also use uh, 443. This will be where the phones are going to retrieve the phone configurations or the firmwares. Then we have outbound proxy and outbound proxy port. So if you're using a proxy between your PBX and your devices, you can enter that proxy address here. Remember that this will be configured globally to all of the devices that are using these server settings. So once we're happy with what we have input, we can go ahead and click on save. So the data has been added to the database. Then we have the firmware section. Here you can upload firmware files which will be used by the different brands of phones that you use. So you can enter the brand, the phone model, and the firmware you will like to use for those models. Now let's take a look into creating a template for our different devices. So today, we're going to be configuring a Yealink T58V phone. As you can see here, I have this phone set to factory default, so we do not have anything configured to it. Well, you can see that all of our accounts are disabled since we have not made any configurations to it. So let's start the provisioning process. So let's create a template. We're going to give it a name. We're going to select the brand. In this case, it's a Yay Link. Under phone model, we're going to select uh, the T58. As you can see, we have quite a few models here, so we can uh, go ahead and filter that out. And under here, we're going to select T58V since we have that camera attachment. Under time zone, we're going to select uh, Eastern Time, so we can go ahead and select United States Eastern Time. And as you can see, we have the time zones adapted depending on the phone model that you're using and phone brand. 
Under language, we're going to leave it in English. Here are all the language supported by this particular phone model. And under server settings, it automatically selects the server settings that we have here because it's the only server settings that we have on this server. We also have the shared option if you would like to share this with your different tenants. And then under it, we can configure our different DSS keys. So the first one, we can leave it uh, as our line. Uh, the second one, let's configure it as our uh, VLF key. We can monitor uh, our boss. We can enter the value of their phone number. So 3801, 3801. Once again, this is just a demo server. So these numbers are arbitrary. And on, of course, this will work under our first line. We will configure the lines afterwards once we reach the provisioning uh, section. Remember that right now we're configuring a template which we can use with different devices. So uh, once we like the DSS keys, we can go ahead and move on to phone books. Here you can enter different URLs for remote directories which you can create using the phone books add-on for Vital PBX. So for that, we can go to tools and then under phone books, you will be able to create your different phone books. In this case, I already have an external phone book. And here you can see the different contacts that I have. In this case, I only have one that's just for the demo. And then uh, you would be able to add a prefix uh, if you have a prefix to dial the phone numbers. So what we're interested for right now is this phone book URL. So we're going to copy it. We can come back to the provisioning templates and we can add that URL here. And we can call this uh, clients, for example, if we want to provision this type of information to different phones. And then finally, the last tab we have here is the custom tab. Here, you can add custom values to the provisioning template directly. So this is the configuration file on the raw, but if you wish to configure something more specific, you can make any customizations to the different options here under the template. And as you can see, we made it bigger, or you can make it smaller, depending on how much you wish to look at. So once we're comfortable with our template, we can go ahead and click save. And now finally, we have the provisioning section. Here, since we're the super administrator, we can select the tenant with which we will be working with. And then we have the provisioning URL we can use to provision the phones. Uh, we will take a look into how we can use this in just a moment. Then right under it, we have the phone devices. Here we can add a device, export the list of devices, if you wish to export uh, into a CSV or different devices that you have configured. And also we have the option to scan the network for devices. When scanning a network, you will need to enter the network address. So in this case, it's a 1.0 and then I have a netmask of slash 24 and I can go ahead and click on scan now. And here you can see the information for the different devices that I have connected to my network along with the brand and then you can define the model here. Keep in mind that when you're scanning the network for devices, this will only work on local networks. So this is mostly uh, for use on on-premise installations where you would have the PBX on the same network as your devices. We still cannot scan the internet for devices and I don't think that would be safe either. So let's add our device. So here we're going to add the device. We're going to enter the MAC address for this device we will give this device a description. Then we select the brand. In this case, once again, it's a Yee Link T58V. So T58V. It'll automatically select the template because it's the only template that I have for this phone model. Then we can choose which tenant we're going to apply this um, provisioning configuration for. Now we can add the accounts. So we're going to add the first account. I will add this extension called Joseph Montes. And we can go ahead and click on save. And as you can see, you can add as many accounts that that device can support. Now that I have the device added, I can go ahead and copy this provisioning URL and add it directly to the device. So in the case of this Yealink T58, I can go to settings and then under auto provision, I can go ahead and paste it under server URL. This provision URL can also be added to your DHCP pool under option 66. This will be able to provision this uh, link 
to your devices uh, directly from your DHCP server, and you wouldn't need to add it directly phone by phone. This is useful, so you do not have to go ahead and configure phone by phone, which is what we're trying to evade using auto provision. So once I have this provisioning URL added to my phone, in this, in this case, my Yaling 258, I can go ahead and click on confirm. So the uh, server URL has now been saved to it. And now I can go ahead and click on auto provision now in this case. You can also power cycle the device. So it asks me if I want to auto provision now, I click on OK. And the configuration is updating. This can take a couple of minutes, so we will go ahead and wait for this to be done. Your phone will power cycle once and have all of the configurations updated. And now that it has been done, we can go ahead and check. So if we go to accounts, we can see here under register, we have account one, Joseph Montes, registered. It automatically added all of the necessary information, including the username and password to register this device. It added that server host from the server settings, along with the port needed. If we go under DSS key and select line keys, you will be able to see that our different keys have already been configured as we provisioned. So the keys reflect what I configured under my template. So with all of that done, we have been able to provision our devices right from the Vital PVX phone provisioning module. As you can see, it is a very streamlined and very intuitive way for you to configure multiple devices and even on a multi-tenant environment. So we hope you enjoyed this module and know that it is constantly growing as well as all of the Vital PBX applications and add-ons are. And uh, we hope that you make use of it in the near future or right away. So with all of that said, my name was Joseph Montes and we will see you next time.